Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. Hello, everyone. It is time. It is Saint Killjoy time. Let's do this on the hitbox, baby. Just say no to Twitch. Let's do this. Guardians of the Galaxy, in honor of the noise, I'll be podcasting with him. Later tonight, and I want him to get pumped for that. I want him to get hyped. I want the noise to have the good time. So, I'm challenging him to some pinball in the delay of that. And if KC doesn't have the opportunity to play some pinball with me, or against me, or for whatever reason, he can enjoy this and know what he's in for for tonight. Me and the noise have never podcasted together before, so I think it's going to be a good time. I'm looking forward to it. I know he's looking forward to it. I'm sure AZ Rockslide, fellow host of Queued Up, is looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a good, a good time had by all. And I think all the listeners are going to enjoy it as well. Let's do it, man. Oh, I, I did early. Oh, well. That was the skill shot. I boned it. This table works a little differently than other tables. So if you've not seen Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, gameplay before, ta-da. You're about to witness it. Two ninety nine on Steam. You know, it's available on other platforms as well. And I would highly recommend Pinball FX2 from Zen Studios on any platform. It plays the same regardless of what you're playing it on. Which, how often can that be said, man? I personally, you know, I'm a t I'm Steam PC reviewer. And I do that for EverydayGamers.com. And, you know, so if I'm going to own something, it's going to be on Steam. And I love Zen Studios. Uh, I was not aware of Zen Studios till uh, May of last year when they came to Steam. Because again, no lie, Steam PC Gamer right here. I mean, literally, if you're not on Steam, I probably don't know about you. Or maybe I'm aware and I just haven't looked into you. My roots is uh, console gaming. Started back when the Atari had the wooden paneling. So that's where, that's where I come from. You know, I played on Commodore. I, I played D Nintendo. I had the original Grey Gun. I grew up with gaming. Uh, you know, I've I owned a a uh, Super Nintendo, an N64, a PlayStation, PlayStation 2, Xbox, Xbox 360. You know, my roots is console gaming, and in fact, a lot of times when I'm playing on the PC, I'm using my Xbox 360 controller. Now. Having roots in console, and you hear me say I'm a I'm a PC Steam PC gamer these days. How did that happen? Well, let me explain how that happened. It was a uh, very simple. Uh, you know, I had a classic Xbox. It melted. You know, and I contacted Xbox. You know, because it melted, and then they were aware that there was problems, and so they had the audacity to uh, send me out. The replacement well, was the first time I ever had a console problems. Xbox 360 comes out, Red Ring of Death. I went through two Xbox 360s, and I'm just I'm done. Consoles are getting 
more and more expensive. And I'm sorry, but a PC, you can do more with PC than you can with a console. Now, I mean, consoles are are evolving. Don't get me wrong. Uh, you know, even the X-Bone is showing how much they're evolving and changing. But, you know, at the end of the day, my PC can still do more. I can do more with the PC. Steam sales, the sales are better. They're, they're getting better on PSN and Xbox Live, don't get me wrong. But still... Everything is is just better benefit when you go PC. And even though I'm a PC gamer, I say a Steam PC gamer. And the reason for that is, is I do not uh, support Origin. Also, you know, I believe in gaming with a budget and having a budget in mind. And so I don't, you know, there's a lot of places, good old gaming, a lot of places that you can get in and, and buy stuff. But by saying okay I'm only gonna buy it if it's available on Steam or if I can buy it through some type of sale and make it a Steam key it keeps me from just buying anything and everything and I mean if you look at my uh, my Steam game list anyways I've got almost 450 games so you know I think it was good of me to like set some uh, you know foundations limitations and whatnot and I don't like uh, electronic arts at all and so don't try to convince me to go origin uh, I do have an origin account it is not installed and the only reason why I have an origin account is because uh, you know you had to uh, verify your electronic arts games years ago when you bought them and by doing that that verification process they took that electronics arts account, account and they set it up as an origins account. So basically, my electronic arts that I used to, you know, register my games when I bought them, when I played them on console, you know, that's what got me the origin account. So no, nope, have no fear. I'm not going to go origin. I'm very, uh, very stern in my stance against origin. Um, even though I love Mass Effect Universe and I love Mass Effect 3, uh, you know, and I, I played that on console, of course. I'm not going to uh, be playing it on PC unless it ever goes to Steam. Uh, Dead Space 3 will not be playing it on PC unless it goes to Steam. Uh, you know, they can origin up all they want. I don't care if it's not uh, if it's not on Steam. I'm just not buying it. And again, the reason why is so I can limit uh, where I'm spending my money at, you know? If I'm just like, oh, I can buy this and I can buy it from anywhere and I can get it from anywhere. And then you start having all these accounts like you got your good old gaming's account. You got your Steam account. You got your Humble Bundle account. You got your your Indie Gallia account. You got, you know, you got your uh, GameStop account. You've got your Origin account. I mean... Yeah, I'm just over here just naming off a few accounts. You've got stuff spread out all over the internet. You know, I before I did Steam, I did Impulse. And uh, Impulse got bought out by uh, GameStop. And, of course, I, uh, I'm i not going to support GameStop by any stretch of the imagination or, or means. And so then it became Steam. So... Steam is where I'm buying all my games. It's the only place I buy games from. Now, granted, it's not like, oh, I only buy from Steam. Uh, I will buy from a sell if it has a Steam key. If I can activate it on Steam, then I will buy it. If it has no Steam key, you know, and everyone's like, oh, we want DRM free. Uh, that's fine. You can have DRM free. I don't mind. You can play Steam offline you, just because... You, you have something on Steam doesn't mean it has DRM. There is an offline mode for Steam that you can play your games on as long as they don't require online internet connection. Now, things being the way they are, I am an online gamer. DRM does not affect me, does not bother me. It is not a problem. I will DRM all day long. I'm cool with that. You know. And, and in some ways, I see a benefit to DRM because, like, if you take for instance, Borderlands One and Two. Let's say my PC crashes or I get tired of playing them or whatever else. Uh, 
it's saved on the cloud, on the Steam cloud. So when I go to reinstall Borderlands, Borderlands 2, like like just for for example, I install Borderlands because I'm like I'm pretty sure I did everything I was going to do in Borderlands and I wasn't going to go back to Borderlands, you know, because Borderlands 2 came out. Loved Borderlands 2 even more than Borderlands 1. So I was like, you know, not going to uh, not going to probably be playing this again. Then I had a buddy that picked it up that had never played it, but he played Borderlands 2, but he wanted to go back and play the first one. And I was not going to let him go by himself alone and play the first one. And I was like, you know what, I'll just I'll download it and I'll play it with you. And then, so I entered Borderlands again, didn't ever think I'd be back in there. And then lo and behold, my Steam Cloud had all my characters saved from before. So... I thought that was pretty darn neat. You know, another, another, another instance. My buddy, Mr. Dude, which you know, he'll he'll be a guest on this broadcast from time to time. Yeah, you'll get to know him. But anyways, he uh, he was all about uh, Dark Souls 2, and his PC crashed, and he was on his third playthrough of Dark Souls 2. Dark Souls 2 is not DRM. Even though it's on Steam, it's not got any DRM. It's not got any cloud save. It's got none of that. So he lost everything. And even though he was loving Dark Souls 2, he was not about to just start over from the very beginning again. So that that's what ended his Dark Souls 2. And I felt bad for him because if Dark Souls 2 had, had done Steam Cloud, that wouldn't have been an issue. So I mean, it's not like DRM is the enemy. There are, there are, there are pluses and minuses to everything. It just depends on your outlook and, and how you want to view stuff. I'm okay with DRM because again, I am an online gamer. I'm aware that everything I play is going to be online anyways. Uh, the reason why I'm an online gamer is I want to play, you know, online with people. You know. I'm, I'm a bit, you know, I don't really want to do the solo experience anymore. I mean, that doesn't mean I'm not ever going to play a single player game. I mean, this right here is a single player game. But even though it's a single player game, it has a multiplayer challenge. And uh, at the noise, you know, I challenge you, even though you're not on Steam, the noise is a PS4 player. And I will accept his high scores from his PS4 pinball because it's all the same regardless on what account you're playing on you know so I you know I offer a little challenge to the noise to do some competing I'm also trying to convince the noise to uh, to let go of his his console only behavior and to join the dark side that is steam I would love to uh, love to corrupt him others he has said, he has stated, others have tried before to bring me to PC and failed. You will be no different. Buddy, you just don't know. <laughs> I'm persistent. But now, he, he enjoys the PS4. More power to him. Um, I will never own another PlayStation product again. And it's not because of uh, anything PlayStation's done or anything like that as far as content they've made or anything else it's just strictly a, deci a decision there's this uh, metal uh, I think it's cobalt cable I can't think of the pronunciation off the top of my head and I'm not going to google at this point but there's this mineral that only comes from one mine in Africa it's the only mine in the world that produces it and that, that mine in Africa is in Congo so, I mean, everyone's kind of familiar with Congo, and that Congo's had a lot of war and a lot of problems and whatnot. And the reason why I will not buy PlayStation products is that they use this one material, this one metal, in their electronics, and it can only be found in one mine in the world. Now, what PlayStation stance is, is that they don't buy from this mine. They don't buy from this source. They get it from a third party from a different source. Therefore, they're not contributing to the problem. And what the problem is, is that in these mines in Congo, they are making children work the mines and are working them to death. 
And again, we're talking about children. You know, for this this mineral. And it's just so other people in the world can play a video game. And PlayStation has said, we will not buy from that mine. Okay, here's here's the problem, here's the logic, and here's where... I don't know where things broke down, but they did. This mineral, this material, can only be found in one mine in the world, and that mine is in Congo. Even if you buy from another source... It can only be found in one mine in the world. So it doesn't matter what source you're buying it from. It's from that mine somehow. No other place in the world has that metal. No other mine in the world has it. It's only found in the mine in Congo. I don't care where you're buying it from, it's only found in the mine in Congo. It does not matter where your source is, where it comes from. The material had to come from anywhere. That third party did not just produce it from the sky. It came from the mine in Congo. They, you know, they may not have bought it directly. It may have come through, you know, down the pipeline somewhere else. You know, regardless, I don't know how or where they got it, but it doesn't matter. The fact is, there's only one mine in the world that produces this material. It can only come from one place. doesn't matter what source or what channel you use to procure that material. It only comes from the one mine. Uh, so, as long as uh, PlayStation uses that, you know, Sony uses that material, I will not own anything PlayStation. And, you know, I'm just part of that boycott against PlayStation because, you know, there should not be kids dying in Africa, in Congo, working in a mine, slave labor, just so people can kick back and play a video game in some other part of the world, you know. And, you know, it's like, oh, well, this, this material is a little cheaper. We want to keep costs down. Use a different material. I don't care. If it was $100 more, I don't care. I would buy it at that point if they would use the, a different material, if it didn't come from this mine. But uh, it comes from this mine, and I'm not going to be part of children suffering so that I can play games. It's not happening, and I won't ever do it. And that's my stance on it. And it's not to say that Sony's not a great company, doesn't make great games, anything like that. It's just I will not buy... Uh, Sony products and you know it's not just Sony anymore this same material is being used in cell phone creation and it's being used in a lot of products and so a lot of technology is using this material because of how cheap it is so they can build something cheaply and by cutting costs we're making kids suffer in another part of the world and it's a shame and it shouldn't be happening but I mean are our technological needs so great in you know the first world countries that we want children dying in third world countries just to give us our luxuries? You know I don't think so. So that's that's my stance on that. You know you you do what you want, you do what you feel's right. Just for me, I I'm not buying PlayStation products anymore, and I've not owned a PlayStation product since the PlayStation 2 because. That's when all this came out. Um, I had a launch beta PS2 uh, before I found out about this, and you know, then once it became news and once I found out about it, uh, you know, I stopped using the PlayStation 2 and sold it. And I've not owned a PlayStation product since then. And more than likely, I probably never will own a PlayStation product again, not unless there's like some vast changes and whatnot, and like I said, I mean console gaming between the red ring of death from Xbox having machines melt, buying multiple machines that didn't last. I mean, this is what really kind of grinds my gears, you know, Peter Griffin, so to speak. Uh, you know, I had I had an Atari. I had a, uh, a Grey Gun Nintendo. You know, I bought one of, the, one of the Nintendos that when they first became available in the United States, I bought one. And, uh, 
you know, all the machines that I've bought over the years could still be played. I took great care of, of my products. And I, like I said, I had that launch uh, PS2, that beta PS2 that a lot of people had a lot of problems with. I mean, that shows the level of care that I put into taking care of my electronics. And then I went through one Xbox Classic and two Xbox 360s. And then, so I didn't want to buy Xbox anymore because their, their equipment's not reliable. I didn't want to buy PlayStation anymore because of the situation with the mine in Congo and that I don't want children to be enslaved and work to death in a mine for my personal enjoyment. So, I mean, what was I going to do? You know, there's not like a whole lot of options out there. And Nintendo lost me years ago. GameCube was the last Nintendo product that I purchased and supported. And the reason why is just Nintendo is just too kitty. You know, I'm, you know, I grew up with Nintendo, yes. I love Nintendo. I've got a lot of fond memories with Nintendo, yes. But I'm an adult now, and I want to be playing more... You know, not necessarily uh, mature themed games, but just more uh, more games that kind of tailor towards my mindset. You know, as an adult, I am an adult. You know, I'm not I'm not a kid. I don't want to be playing something that was made for eight year olds because I'm not eight. I'm I'm a grown man. I'm 35. You know, so Nintendo just wasn't an option for me because of that. Because you know. I'm an adult. I want to. I want to play adult games. Far away, far away. But anyway, so that's this is all this conversation that we're having right now is just kind of what sets my channel apart from other channels. I am a games journalist. You know, I'm also a published author. I also create my own. Uh, manga comics for the Kindle, exclusively for the Kindle, you know, and so, you know, I, I like to think that I'm fairly informed uh, compared to most people, and then, even though I'm a games journalist, I'm not a pro developer, I am a pro consumer, but I feel like there's plenty of pro developer journalists out there that the world can do with me being a consumer one you know I, I've spent a lot of uh, a lot of money invested a lot of times in in games and stuff and so I just like to save people their time and money and let them know what's a good buy in my opinion in you know what what could be avoided you know and so that's just what you're gonna kind of find on my channel also I do have a great relationship with developers even though I'm you know pro consumer I still have great relationship with developers and so there will be developers on the stream uh, we'll do interviews uh, we'll do gameplay with developers that's you know that is to be expected that's not a problem that's gonna happen you know I will be playing with uh, you know friends online uh, friends I'll play with on Steam other everyday uh, gamer cast members you know we're we're all very friendly, very open, and hold multi bonus multipliers. I don't really think I had any, but oh well. I I'm enjoying this table. It is, it you know it feels different. It feels unique compared to some of the other tables. You know what I mean? So I do like that. I don't like the little mini mini game here. But I am enjoying the table. This is the Guardians of the Galaxy table. I have not seen the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. And I don't even know all of the names of the Guardians of the Galaxy characters. Uh, I, you know, I'm aware of some of them because of Marvel Heroes. I played that last summer. Right after it came out of beta when it was first launched. And I put 200 hours in it, and, you know, I did enjoy it, but it was kind of like one of those Diablo-style games where you collect gear. And, you know, in those kind of games, the gear you collect changes your appearance and whatnot.
I'm gonna try, man. I'm gonna try to help you out, but you're in trouble, Rocket. Sorry. Hey, the Brekkity, you are in trouble, sir. I am Groot. I don't have that long of a lifespan anyways. But yeah, so... I'm aware of Guardians of the Galaxy, but no, I've not seen the movie yet. But everyone's like, you've got to see the movie, so... At some point, I'm sure I will. Uh, I tend... I don't go to theaters anymore because I don't like going to the movies by myself, and I am a single man. So... You know, I don't go to the, the movies... I just wait till it comes out on Redbox or Netflix and watch it then. You know. Now, if, if I had someone to go to the movies with, I would, by all means, I would go have a date night out at the movies. I would go, you know, there's a drive-in not too far from me, and I love to go to the drive-in. But I'm not going to go to the drive-in by myself. You know, that's just not going to happen. So here we are. A thief, two thugs, an assassin, and a maniac. I look around, you know what I see? Losers. Losers. But life is giving us a chance. Let's blow this joint. Drax, get your more to the ship. Rocket, you're with me. All right, boss, let's go. Sanity is the refuge of cowards. But yeah, I, you know, I, I just I absolutely love uh, pinball FX2. I own all the tables. And I do buy the tables as they're released. You know. So, yeah, I have invested quite a bit of money into this. And that's not a problem. And I know I did not buy it while it's on sale. I, I do pay the full price. You know, I really enjoy it. I know it's not for everyone, but still, I mean, as far as the physics and stuff, uh, you know, I really dig this pinball game for sure. there's no special treatment necessary for little old us, Ronan. Hey guys, he likes us. He really likes us. Boom. Got my skill shot. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. Can't say that at times I don't have a lot to talk about because uh can't say that this uh this has not been informative. I've been talking quite a bit about a lot of stuff. I am Groot. I am Groot. Hear me Groot. Oh, I didn't hit it enough. It rolled back down. It was so close. Uh, no, ball out. Ah. What you think the noise? I know you're watching it. You gonna you gonna accept my pinball challenge, my man? Get on your PS4. Let's let's share those high scores. I'm all for it, brother. Dead of night and 
Check me to the super massive. Ah. Yeah, guardians. I've still never spelled the guardians out. I want to one of these days. I do. I really do. Oh, missed it. Uh, Xander increases the jackpot score. Oh, no, 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 no. Ball one, oh, one is locked. I'm just, I'm ready for a multi-ball. It has been a little bit since we had a multi-ball. I am so ready for a multi-ball. One more Yondu and we'll have a multi-ball. Yondu, let's do it! Oh wait, no. This isn't a multi-ball. It's just a ramp fest. Alright, we're going to have ourselves a little scoring ramp fest. That's fine. Ah, there we go, two million, let me hit this ramp, get two million, oh no, I messed up my yondu, ah, Oh. Boom. Skill shot. Somebody call the skill shot, please. I'm getting them. Oh, we almost got Guardian spelled out. I'd really like to see what that does. I'm going to spell it out. Oh, fire too soon. Thank you, Groot. Ah! Get up there. One more! We can find out what it does when I spell it out, baby. One more. I just, I gotta get it over to that side. Oh, we spelled out rocket. There's my multi ball. Ah! Get up there! Well, Groot, help me out here, bud. Alright, we need one more for the spelling out the Guardians. I'd really like to know what it does. Oh, I missed it! Barely! Crap! Oh, no! I'm still not going to know what happens when you spell out Guardians. I missed it by one letter. Nah. It's not fair, man. It's not right. Yeah, the score is not bad. It's not my best score, though. I'll show you what the best score is. I can tell you are a man of great honor. My best score for this table is... Forty-six million six hundred and forty-seven thousand four hundred and fifty-five. So we're on the road to fifty million on this table. That's that's our goal. Let's do it. But yeah, of the uh, friends that have gone and seen Guardians of the Galaxy, the thing that I've heard is that they love it more than the Marvel Avengers movie. And that's like that's been like a unanimous statement amongst all of them. So I'm gonna have to see this movie at some point. But like I said, unless I get a date, it's not gonna be at the theater. I 
so I just I want to spell Guardians out so bad. I just want to see what happens when you because I mean pinball tables. The word Guardians spelling out Guardians, man. That is a lot of trips down one ramp. And I'm a ramp guy. I mean, you've been watching me. I do my ramps. Uh, let's get this Guardian started. Or Yondu. We can do Yondu. I don't mind. There we go. We got the G. Ah, I boned it. Oh, not enough. Not enough steam. There we go. Up the Drax ramp. Can find you there. Oh, your time. Ah, ball out. Groot, where were we on that play, man? Ah, heaven so far away. So. Now that you've gone away, gone away, gone away, yeah, 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 yeah. Words on your grave show that I still care. Black roses and Hail Marys Take back what's taken from me Reach to the sky Call out your name If I could trade I would So far away, stings and it stings out. So cold now that you've gone away, gone away, gone away. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Let me trade. I would feels and it feels like heaven so far away. Ah, balls out. Yeah, this song does have a special significance to me. You guys don't know this about me probably unless you know you've read some of my books or something you know if, if you've got some history with me and you've been following me for several years then you're aware most likely but in case you're uh, you're new and just finding me for the first time because I am streaming on a new site and you know I am 
having a new audience these days, you know, especially through uh, EverydayGamers.com. You know, this is not something that even the Everyday Gamers dot com people know. And, you know, I've been working with them for almost a year now. But, uh, the reason why that song has special significance was, uh, it came out at a time after, uh, Cheryl passed away. And, uh, you know, Cheryl was, uh, Cheryl June Nall. And, uh, her and I, uh, started dating around... I was 12, she was 13. She was uh, nine months older than me. Uh, the ongoing joke was that we were a pregnancy apart. And uh, you know, I, I cared very much for her. And, uh, you know, I was 16, uh, she was 17, and she died in a car accident. And what made that bad was um, before the... Uh, before the car accident, um, yeah, I'm from the state of Missouri, and uh, there, you know, I was very involved with my youth group. Group and let's go do this because how we met was we were in a different youth group at you know we were at a different church that time and uh, we met on a trip to Branson and so I thought well how cool would it be to uh, to go back to Branson together because that's where we met and uh, you know she was self conscious about herself being in a bathing suit which was Unnecessary. She rocked a bathing suit, you know. It would have been fine, but she didn't want to go for those reasons, and so I was like, "Well, okay, we were gonna go see a movie. Let's let's just stick to the plan. Let's go see a movie." And, but she knew that I really wanted to go, and I really wanted. It's not so much that I just wanted to go to go. You know, I wanted us to go together, but. She wanted me to go ahead and go, and she would just go to the movies with the, another friend, and we would just get together, you know, the following week, or whatever, and she would go see the movies she wanted to see, and, you know, I'd go to Branson. Well, this is why I don't, when I make plans, I don't, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't really make plans anymore, but uh, I try to just be spontaneous in general now, but when I do make plans... I don't ever change those plans, and this is why. So I went to Branson, had a lot of fun, it was a great time, it was, you know, everything I thought it would be, you know, more without her, it's, you know, it would have been even better with her being there. But, um, on the way back from Branson in the car ride, uh, you know, we were on a van, of course, and... I felt dead, I felt hollow, I just felt completely cold, shattered, alone, and everyone could tell my change in my behavior, and no one understood it, and, you know, even the youth minister got concerned, and I was like, I don't know what's wrong, and he's like, you know, what what's wrong, and I was like, I don't know what's wrong. I just feel like a part of me just died. You know, I couldn't explain it. That's the only way I, that's the only way I could put it in words is I felt like a part of me had just died. And that that's no bullshit, legitimate that that happened. You know, I remember that feeling completely, you know, even even talking about it now after all these years, I still can feel that pain. Which, you know, when you're 16 years old, that pain you know, I mean, it, it was it was a really crappy night. I didn't know what was wrong. Get home, my parents knew something was wrong. They thought it had something to do with going to Branson. And I was like, no, it's, I honestly, I don't know. I couldn't explain to anybody what it was. And just my only answer was, I feel like part of me just died. That's the only the only thing I can, can say. That's the only way I communicate it. I just feel like I died inside. Well... 
the moment where I started feeling like I had that feeling where I just died inside and like a part of me was just gone. Uh, I kid you not, honest to God, that was the moment that Cheryl died. You know? And, I mean, you go back and you look at the time and everything. Literally, when she died, for whatever reason, I felt it. And I, you know, to this day I still can't explain that or whatnot. I never will be able to. I just, you know, I can only know what I lived through. And, you know, just honest to God, that's what happened. And, uh... So anyway, so she passed away, and uh, went through about five years where I was just really angry and, and pissed off, because I couldn't comprehend why she had to die. You know, you know, you lose that uh, invincible feeling, teenager invincible feeling real quick when people around you start dying. But... Um, so anyways, my name is, is William Travis Patterson. That's my full name. And her full name is Cheryl Junal. And the reason why I started writing and started publishing was because anyone that knew my name, I wanted them to know her name as well. And so, yeah. That's just, that's what that is. So anyways, that... That song we were listening to was one of the songs I listened to a lot. You know, it came out around the time that she died. I think it might have been either the year before or the year after, but it was around that time period, and I I listened to it a lot. But yeah, it's, I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, I'm still alone. These days, I mean, you know, if, if there is such a thing as a soulmate, you know. I just, I can't explain that feeling of feeling like I died inside. I've just... I can't explain it, you know. And if there is such a thing as soulmates, and, you know, she died and I felt that, then what do you do when your soulmate dies? How do you, how do you go on in life, you know? And so, so yeah, I'm single and I will probably always be single and... I'm actually okay with that in some ways. But hey, you know, it's it, we need to have some fun and have a good time. But there you go, yeah. Anyone wanted to know more about me, now you know, man. I mean, you can go Google me and find out anything you want to know about me. It's out there, man. There is a German website that has a very accurate telling of things I did during high school. And, I mean, it's a German website. It's, you know, from Germany. I mean, why do they know about my high school career to the detail that they do? I don't know, but they do, man, so... I always think that's interesting. So yeah, anyone that wants to know about me, just Google my name. And you can find out everything you want to know and more. It'll be okay. Which, that's kind of nice, because, uh, you know, you watch the movie Wanted, and one guy's name was, my name is Wesley, uh, whatever he was. And he was always upset because he would go and Google his own name, and, uh, you know, he was just depressed because there was no search results when he Googled his name, <laughs> and yet here, you know, I Google my name, and there's, there's 
literally pages and just pages of stuff and just of everything. It's just my life is in great detail on the internet and it's just kind of weird. I think it's odd. I mean, you know, my sister calls me her quasi-famous brother. But, uh, I don't know. I don't really feel... I mean, I, you know, I'm aware that I've got I've got fame and that people do know me and whatnot. And I'm, I'm aware of this, but it doesn't affect me, you know. I'm just, I, I'm just a regular guy. I always felt like a regular guy. I, you know, the way I looked at it is... You know, I just I did something people liked, and that doesn't mean that I'm a different person. I'm still just a guy, you know? So I'm very down-to-earth, and a lot of people really like that quality about me because I guess a lot of people will, would get, like, egotistical or whatever in my shoes, but not me, you know? I'm just a guy that did something that people liked, you know? That's how I look at it. House of cars in charge. We sold a constantly. Got him with my home ass. You are no match for my power, Earth Man. Ah, the guardian ramp. Yeah, let's just start locking balls. <laughs> let's, just, let's just ignore the guardian ramp. We'll just start locking balls instead. Crap. Ah. There we go. Got it. Assassin, rock superstar, live large, big house, five cars, in charge. Oh, ho, ho. no! You dirty ramp! Dirty, dirty ramp! I'm sure the noise laughed when he saw that. <laughs> you ever need? Turn you into a monster. Rule the world. And mess with me, I'm a monster. Everything you ever need. I find a way to turn you into a monster. You can rule the world. And mess with me, I'm a monster. Everything you ever need. Turn you into a monster. Can rule the world. This with me, I'm a monster. Got that one. I just get this one over here. Crap! Ah, no! Oh well. Yes, I do have a wide variety of music I listen to, as you can tell. Oh, don't give me that look, brother. Monster. Thing you ever need I'm the way to turn you into a monster We can rule the world Who's gonna mess with me? I'm a monster Everything you ever need Turn you into a monster 
We can rule the world. We are my monster. Ah! It's gonna hold together for as long as I need it to. Bye bye. Crap. Get up there. Get up there. Well, be hit, brother. Crap. Crap. Well, it's going to hold together for as long as I need it to, man. Crap. Oh, watch it roll off. So mean to me. No, stop that. Into a monster. Ah, we're at the Iron Guardians. If only. Pre skill shot value. That's not going to do me any good on my last ball. That's kind of like the worst thing I could have got in that deal. Oh! Dirty! Dirty, dirty. I was having a pretty good time, too, man. A little mindless self-indulgence, baby. There's nothing you can do that I've not already done to myself. I've wanted to dance with nobody, not you. It's to me. Be nice to me. Let me go. Myself. Do you do that? I've not already done to myself. I've not already done to myself. I've not already done to myself. Done to myself. Ah, I boned it. Peter Jason Quill, you stand accused of corrupting the only law that matters in this galaxy. Mine! You stand accused of being the galaxy's biggest jerk. I mean, no! Got a ball save going on there. Got it. Let's see what you got this time. Fire away. You are no match for my power, Earthman.
the rock, the mic, the treble. I like my coffee black, just like my mana with the bass, the rock, the mic, the treble. In a minute, minute. In a minute, minute, in a second. Feel like that. Oh yeah, Drax time, baby. Let's do this. Get their Drax. Ah, ball save, ball save. There's a ball save there. Ah. Ah. I may have played this, this table enough today. Might be a sign of that, man. Yondu time, baby. Let's do this thing. Ah. Crap. Let's go down every right light, every ramp that's not lit up like Christmas tree right now. That would be super. Well, you're gonna be hit, brother. Just suck it up, man. Heads up, Pete. Yonder's got you in his sights. Ugh. Come on, Pete. The ship can't hold together forever. We don't want it to. We want to hold together for now. Heads up, Pete. Yonder's got you in his sights. Damn it, I'm hit. Hey, he's hit, man. Look out. Yeah, I had the music set up to where we'll play for an hour, so it kind of notifies me that we've been playing for Heads up, Pete. an hour. Abandoned ship. <laughs> All right, this is a good stopping point right here, I think. We've played enough of this table for right now. This is why I'm going to take a break for a little bit, sense. and then when I come back, we'll be streaming something else. I don't know, I might do another uh, Pinball FX2 table. I don't know. We'll see what I decide to do. But uh, whatever it is, I will see you guys probably in about 15 minutes or so.